Okay. Alright. Hey, hey. Uh, real quick. Um, I'm going to pre warn you. Um, I may not be in class tomorrow. Um, we have meetings for model teachers tomorrow. I'm in a building. It's just that I, I have to be in a meeting. I don't know if I'll be back by 9 period. I'm hoping that I will. Hoping that it doesn't take the entire time. But if I am, it's going to be a pretty easy day. You're going to be working on an assignment for me. Uh, the sub will give you the page numbers and stuff. Um, I want to kind of see where we're sitting at today. That's kind of what I want to make sure of, that you know the different parts we've done in case we have a quiz or a test coming up within a week or two. Um, I want to make sure that we are more than prepared for it. Um, now, today, here's what I want to discuss. We have a couple basic problems. Number one. Okay, let's say that this is my problem. Kind of a, it's a function that's kind of going up and down, it's kind of oscillating up and down. It's got an arrow on the one side, it has an end cap on the other. And one of the questions I want you to know how to do, and this is what we've done previously, could you find a maximum on this graph? Yes. Okay, <coughs> okay now there's two types, two types of maximums, right? Do we feel comfortable with what an absolute is? Yes. Or what they call a global maximum. Does this graph have a global? No. Is that, is that the, yeah, it goes up towards infinity, right? It has an arrow. It doesn't have a maximum. If it goes up towards positive infinity with the arrow, there is no absolute false point. It's just going that direction. So there is no. So no max. Now, if we set a relative maximum, that is a different. Okay, relative or local maximum is when you have hilltops and valleys. So on this particular case, there is a couple of hilltops on this problem. Those are relative maxes. There's two of them. I know they're at different levels, but um, what makes a maximum is when you have a hilltop um, for a relative. So in that particular case, this is negative four comma one, two, three, four, five, six. So negative four, six, that's one of them, or you can just say six. What's a maximum? Yeah, that's maximum the same thing. As what? As a maximum. Why does it ask for both then? The maximum and minimum? Yeah, said, what, ask, no, maximum said, and minimum. What is relative maximum? Yeah. Relative maximum. Uh, it has yeah. that on the homework. Yeah. So um, it's the same idea. It could be um, it could be the actual coordinate versus just what is the highest point. To me, they're the same. Thing. Maximal is coordinate. Yeah. No, like maximum. maximum is coordinate. Yeah. Maximum is like maximal. Maximal. negative four, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. If they say max, okay. um, maxima. That's just like yes, right? It's just the same numbers. It's just the high. Now, um, on the next one, what is that? Three, four. Okay. Now, if you just want to say instead of saying four, negative six, just say six and four. That was that idea of maximum, maximum. Again, um, same idea. To me, that means the same thing. Does that make sense? What a relative is? It's the hell three, four. There. What? what? Why is there a three, four right there? Um, three, four. This is a this is a maximum. It's like a hilltop. So that's also considered to be one. It, it, even though it's not the highest point, right? You agree that it is a hilltop. Right? Yeah. That's what a relative max would be. It's any time you have a hilltop. And they can be at different levels. And you can have more than one throughout the whole picture. It's just that there are hills and valleys. Because if you're looking for a short window, that could be the tallest point. Now. So you have to list it. Okay. All right. Question. Are you going to ask for a test of maximum or the... Maximum. I, I think I asked for maximum. I want the, the actual so like coordinate. Yeah. And I'll, I'll warn you that like test day, like, hey, I want the coordinates. That way we're, we're not, you know, you're not mixing that up. Okay, all right, next. Okay, next one. Um, other than maximum and minimum, it could ask, where is this, where's the interval where this thing increases? This the interval where it's increasing. Three times. Okay, so yeah, so on this particular graph, it is increasing three different times on this graph. As I go from left to right side, this part right here is increasing. It's going up to the right. It's increasing again here to here, and it's increasing again from here and on. Does that make sense where it's going up to the right? And you use parentheses because they're all connected. We would use, in this case, there's at least one, there's one pref, or there's a couple parentheses there is one bracket, because that one end cap is not yeah. shared. Right. So the intervals where this thing is increasing, uh, uh, again, when I do increase, I'm using x numbers. That's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Negative 6 up to negative 4. So negative 6 
to negative 4, parenthesis. Now, while I'm using a parenthesis there, that spot is being shared between decreasing and increasing, so I can't pick, so I have to use a parenthesis there. From 0 up to 3, 0 to 3, notice I'm using parentheses on both of those because they're being shared between increasing and decreasing size. Six both numbers. Infinity. And then union, what, is that 6? Six? 6 to infinity. And I'm using parentheses there because 6 is shared and infinity is not a number. The, that's increasing um, intervals. Decreasing would be the other ones I skipped. There's no constants on this graph. There's no flats. Um, these are like little things we've done over the last couple sections of the last homework we did. Um, or I guess two homeworks ago, I guess, where they ask you like a series of questions about graphs, and hopefully you know how to like read off answers. Um, so it was increasing, decreasing, we had constants, you had max and mins, um, you had, you know, is there any x-intercepts on this graph? There's not. Is there any y-intercepts? There is at 0, 2. Um, those are y-intercepts where it's the y-axis. You just say 2, but it's at 0, 2. All right, questions at all about about the different maximums on intervals. No. That'd be something like on a test question or a quiz. That'd be probably one question where I give you a graph and ask you a series of questions about it. Okay? All right, second thing today. I want to make sure that we know how to find... Do we get homework today? No. Um, we're going to get some tomorrow. Um, the, other, the other thing that we've done recently was a... Uh, differential quotient. That was one of the other things we did the other day. Um, and it was just kind of an intro to like the calc material. It's going to become a bigger part later. You'll see it again. We're going to review it a couple different times throughout the chapters. Um, but this is the formula that you need to have um, on like a test or quiz. This would be printed. So like when we take a test, possibly next week sometime. This would be printed on that question where it says find the differential quotient for the following function. They would give you that, and they would they would ask you, you know, evaluate it for your function. This basically what this is is it's taking your function and figuring out um, where the hills and valleys are. That's what we're going to use it for eventually. Um, in my case, some of those problems you can just see you can see them pretty easily. But if you have a graph that's going up and down a lot, you could have a lot of hills and valleys. This would actually spit these out. Now. How it works, if I give you a, just an example, let's say I gave you f of x is 2x plus 3. Let's say that that's my problem. I could take that problem and use it on this. Um, the, the differential quotient for 2x plus 3 is it's the original function with x plus h plugged in. Then we're going to subtract the original function and then put it all over h. So again, the original function with x plus h is plugged in. Right? So if there's a bunch of x's, plug x plus h into all of them. Then we're going to subtract the original function, that's the original function, and we put that all over h. Does that make sense, like the setup? Then all we do is simplify. You don't have to go as far as that. what we're going to do later. This, all I want you to do is simplify it to a point where you're getting down to some simple expression. There, there's going to be numbers and letters. Um, it could be just a digit, I don't know. Um, it just depends on the problem. Now, if we go through this one and actually simplify it, here's what you do. First step, if there's any powers on any of these parentheses, you have to FOIL. Like, you can't distribute the power. You have to actually write out the parentheses and actually FOIL. In my case, I just have to distribute it to two. There's really no power there. So that's 2x plus 2h plus 3. Then I'm going to distribute the negative sign. So it's minus 2x minus 3. Put this all over h. And here's how you know you did it right. This is my little shortcut. You know you did it right is when you get to this point where you've distributed, you've done all your math, and things without H's start to cancel each other out. That's how you know you did it right when you do the differential quotient. There could be a ton of different H's in this whole problem, but the things without H's start to cancel each other out, and only the things on the top have H's in them. And the last step is that you just divide the H's off. So if there's multiple items with H's, divide H off of each one, just one H. And so in my case, there was only one H there, and then my H was just two. Yeah. And then I move on to the next one. Now, what would make this problem more difficult is if I made that a 2X squared. That's a 2X squared. This would be a square here. And you'd have to write two of these parentheses, foil them together for center and last, distribute two over at last, and then you can combine terms and so that would make it significantly more challenging, but shouldn't be too bad. 
Okay, questions on those? No, no sir. Okay. Uh, third type of problem, oh, that was the second type. Third type of problem that we should be used to seeing what was the first is, time? first one was the grass where you find max and min. Oh, so yeah. oh, yeah. the, the third type of problem that we've done, I bring my graph back here. Uh, third type of problem is where we graph piecewise functions. Oh, yeah. Except so, so let's say this is my function, x for any x greater than or equal to 2, um, it'll be a, let's see, a 3x minus 1 for any x from 0 to 1, and it'll be an x squared for anything less than or equal to negative 2. Let's say that that's my graph. This is my piecewise function. Obviously, when I look at this, I can see that there's two lines. There's two lines on that graph. There's a curve for the bottom one. So there's three distinct pictures. Um, the big thing I want you to get from that when we did this previously was knowing if there's end caps, like filled in circles or open circles, and what numbers you plug in. Especially if you have a curve, you have to plug in multiple numbers. Um, so let's walk through this together so you can get a sense of how this works. Okay. We stop talking. It's getting annoying. All right. Um, so first graph, I'm going to put it in blue here. Um, we're graphing from two and up. So my first dot, I'm going to pick is two, and that'll be a closed dot. The reason why it's closed, it has a bar underneath it, so I know it's closed. And then my second number I'm going to plug in, because I know it's linear, I just have to plug in one more. I'll pick any number bigger than two, so I'll just pick three. The number that's bigger than two. Um, and those will be all closed dots. The first one's closed for sure, and then the rest of them are always closed. But when I plug in a two into x, my answer is two. When I plug in a three into x, it just becomes three. So I'm going to draw that. Two comma two is the filled in dot. Three comma three, that's filled in. It's any numbers greater than two, so it's going that way. There's the first one. Second one here, I'll put in green. Um, they already gave me my two numbers I have to plug in. I have to plug in a zero, and I have to plug in a one. They gave me the two numbers. It is linear. And um, one of them is filled in, and one of them is open. So the number I'm going to plug in is zero, and I have to plug in a number one. This one is closed. This one's an open circle, because that one has a bar, that one doesn't. They gave me my numbers, so I don't need to like guess any two. Okay, when I plug in zero, zero times three is zero, minus one, that's negative one. Uh, plug in a one, three times one is three, minus one is two. So zero, negative one, that's an open circle. And uh, one comma two, and that's a closed circle. All right, so there's that, there's no arrow, because it's between zero to one. And my last graph, it's a curve, I'm gonna put it in red. Uh, I'm gonna plug in a negative two, and it's gonna be a closed circle. And I have to pick any numbers less than negative 2. This is closed. So I'm going to pick a negative 3. I'm going to pick negative 4. And the re reason I'm picking more than 1, it is a curve. So I try to pick as many dots as I can until I can't graph it. Now, when I plug in a negative 2, negative 2 squared, that is 4. Uh, plug in a negative 3, square that, it's 9. Plug in a negative 4, that's 16. And so I can't graph the last one. So negative two comma four, closed circle. Negative three comma nine, closed circle, and then 16 is right there, and it's kind of curving. So there you go, there's my graph. Any questions with piecewise? Now we did an example last week, I think that was part of our homework we did, where you had constants, or if you, know, you had a horizontal line, it's because when you did the piecewise function, you know, you're doing your sets, maybe they just had a number sitting there. Now, this means that you're going to have a horizontal line at that moment because I'm picking every one, every number greater than one. Didn't matter how many numbers I pick. Any number greater than one is an open circle for the first one. Your answer is always four. There's no x to plug in, so it's just four the entire time. So it just looks like a horizontal line at that point. Questions on that? No. Okay, we did those last week. Would that make sense? Uh, the last and Final type of problem this is something we introduced Friday last week. It was the linear problems, like graphs. Now, obviously, you know how to graph linear, right? We we know how to draw because you can just plug in numbers. Um, but do we know the formulas and the types? That's the other thing that we're going to have. Um, so 
let me show you an example. This is the final and fourth type of problem that we're done. Um, so, for linear. So let's say I told you that, let me get rid of my graph, we're going to make that one more. Okay, I just put it back. All right, so last one here. Let's say I was going through 3 comma 5, and my slope was, let's say my slope was uh, 1 third. Okay? All right. Now, what this is, what they would ask eventually in the homework that we're going to get, they're going to give you this information, and they're going to say, for the, following, for the following information, write the equation in this form, and they'll tell you what form they want you to write it in. So, again, we're passing through this coordinate, so I'm going to pass through. And on this particular example, this is my slope. They just told me that right off the bat. And they want you to go to a certain type of form. So maybe on this problem, they want me to go to point slope. It'll tell you what form. Now, obviously on your homework day, I'm going to probably have your formulas for all the different types of lines. I'll probably have them back there tomorrow. Maybe on the marker work back there. So if I'm gone, you can just kind of look up and see them. I'll try to write them up there before you guys uh, walk in. Um, all right, so point slope form. This is the form that you need to know. Okay, there's my form. Okay? Now, what I need to do next, I need to take my, my numbers and plug them in. Obviously, the coordinate you're passing through, this is my x1, and that's my y1. That's, that's what comes on this formula. So I'm going to have x minus the x number and y minus the y number. And then my slope is the one third. There's your formula. That's all you have to do. That's my equation. You move to the next one. That's point slope form. I plug in my point, plug in my slope. That's the formula. Now, they could get tricky. They could get tricky and ask you for different forms instead of just point slope. They could ask you for like slope intercept. And now you have to do a little more work. So let's do one of those. Let's be one of my last problems for the day. We're cruising today, aren't we? Yeah, pretty easy. Okay. So here's the last one. Let's go with negative two comma three, and let's go with negative four comma four. Okay, I like you write this one down. This will be my last problem of the day. Okay. So, last one today. You just turn it off or shut it off? Oh, turn it off. Shut it off. Shut it off. <laughs> shut it off. Shut it off. You shut it off. Okay. Hey, stop. All right. So, um, first of all, what we have to do first on this one, since we're passing through both these coordinates, they didn't tell me slope, so I have to go find it first. So, my slope for me on this particular problem is I subtract the y numbers, subtract the x's, right? That's the formula you can tell you now for one. That's how you find slope. Now, in my case, um, I don't care the order you subtract, but you have to stick with that order once you picked it. So look, what I'm doing is I'm going to pick 4 minus the 3. Those are my y numbers. They have to go on the top. Rises on the top, runs on the bottom. Rises are the y numbers. The x's, now since I went back minus the front, I have to go back minus the front. And yes, you always have to subtract whatever the numbers are. Even if they're negatives, you still have to subtract the negative. So what will happen here... Why'd you go that way? I just picked that one because I like the positive number on the top. That's just what I did. You could have went 3 minus 4. Didn't matter. Now, uh, 4 minus 3, negative 4 minus negative 2. The two, two negative signs would cancel out. So this is going to end up being a 1 over a negative 2. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So that's my slope. Now, maybe this, maybe this question said, I want my answer in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form. Now, that form, if you don't know, is this one. Now, the problem is, I don't have a y-intercept. Like, they gave me coordinates, but there's no y-intercept there. Y-intercept is zero comma a number, so right? Zero. So the idea is that for me, um, I don't need to go find it. What I'm gonna do is, this is my easy way of like cheating the problem. I'm gonna basically write it in point slope form, that form, and then I'm just gonna rearrange it to this one without having to think about it. So when I, when I do that form over there for this particular problem, I'm going to pick one of these two coordinates. I don't really care which one I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick this one. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, so y minus the y number, um, x minus the x number, so the negative 4 and the 4. I'm subtracting those. My slope is a negative 1 half. And I'm going to go through and rearrange this thing 
so that it looks like this form. If I get the y by itself, I'm done. So first step, I'm going to distribute the power, of, or I'm going to distribute the negative half. Shh. Distribute the negative half. So negative half times x is negative half. Negative half times basically a positive four. Negative half times a positive four is a negative, and it's basically just taking four and cutting in half, which is two. Again, how you actually distribute a fraction, here's the shortcut. Take the big number times the top, divide by the bottom. That's just how I do it. So 4 times 1, divide by 2. That's how I got this. 4 times the 1, divide by 2. And it's negative. Last step, add the, add the 4 across. And that will get it to this form. Because it will look just like the correct form. It will be y equals negative half x. And when I add the 4 across, 4 plus a negative 2 is a positive two. There you go. That's my answer. Questions? Now, if they wanted me to go to general, or sorry, standard or general, on the same problem, let's say they didn't want this form. Let's say they wanted a different one. All I need to do is just keep going. If I want to go to standard, let's move the half over. So, I add the half across, and now if I want standard, um, you can't have fractions. So the trick is on this problem, once I add the half over, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. That will get rid of the fraction. There, there's standard form. If I want it general, just subtract the 4 across and I have 0 on the one side. That's general form. 1x plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. Again, how I did that, move the half over, make it positive. Multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fraction because standard can't have fractions or decimals. If there's any decimals, just multiply by 10 or 100. Whatever you need to do. Okay, questions with any of the new stuff that we started last Friday? Perfect. We're done.